you know me personally, you know that I love authentic people. Be authentically who you've been created to be. Be authentically you. Don't be fake you. Be real you. Because God has blessed me with an ability to sniff out fake in people. Especially the phrase that we all use in the morning. Someone may have, or y'all may have heard me uh, in some earlier videos talk about the phrase good morning. We say it so much that it's synonymous with other things. Good morning can mean hello. Good morning could mean leave me alone. It can mean a whole lot of different things depending on who you're asking or who you're talking to and where you've met them in their walk of life. And I remember earlier today, uh, I approached someone and I said, good morning. And they said, it's not really a good morning. I'm here, but it's not a good morning. I was like, that's a real answer. Wow, I appreciate your authenticity. I later on encouraged her and let her know that, you know, you know, you're here and that's what matters. What you're doing right here is what is going to matter for the rest of the day. And, um, you know, I went about my day, but I was thinking about that word good. If you think about good, what consists of good? Like, what is good? Good for me may not be good for you. It's so subjective, like a good meal. Someone may say, Joe, you eat that mess at Cabo or you eat that mess at... Uh, passes to India. I don't eat that type of food. I'm just throwing some of my favorite restaurants out there. So if you're in the Charlotte area, by the way, stop by these restaurants. They're really good. You see what I said? Good. It's subjective. You may like, I don't know, something that I don't like. And I may say, well, you know, then we can have a debate about it. But the one thing that we can debate about is the Lord being good in our lives. Which leads me to our scripture for today. I'm coming from Mark chapter 10, verse 17 through 21. I'm reading out of the New International Version, NIV. It says, As Jesus started on his way, a man ran up to him and fell on his knees before him. Good teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Why do you call me good? Jesus answered. No one is good except God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony. You shall not defraud. Honor your father and mother. Teacher, he declared, all these I have kept since I was a boy. Isn't that like us? We're a answering in a, and I, I sense a little defiance in the man now because he's, he, God is telling him something that he feels like he already knows, but he doesn't know truly who he's talking to. He thinks that he's just talking to a good teacher. But the teacher's really teaching him that you really don't know who you're talking to. Teacher, he declared, verse 20, all these I have kept since I was a boy. Jesus looked at him and loved him. Don't you love how God loves us? He loves us even, even when we're trying to get smart with him. God, you know my situations. God knew you before you knew you. And you're trying to talk to him like he doesn't know who you are. Jesus looked at him and loved him. Verse 21, one thing you lack, he said, go sell everything you have and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. The reason that I was led to, to share that, that particular passage in the Bible is that Jesus, even in his humanity, he could have said, when he said good teacher, Jesus could have just let it go and just talk to him about what he was just talking to him about in terms of his character. He's kept all the commandments. But if you notice where he talks about in verse 20, he says, teacher, he declared all these things I have kept since I was a boy. The one thing that he did lack was his level of selflessness. And in addition to that, he also didn't understand when he was talking to God himself. There's a lot of times in our life when we talk about we want to hear from God or God give me a message or God give me something. God is giving you something right now. He's wanting you to let go some things in your life. He's wanting you to operate in a certain way. But we're busy telling him all the things that we've already done. I, Lord, I, I've, I've, I've kept your commandments. One of Jesus's commandments is if you love me, you will keep my commandments. He kept all the commandments. That man kept all the commandments, but he missed one thing that level of selflessness. When God asks for us to do some astronomically ridiculous things sometimes, sell all your possessions, you're a rich man. If we read on at past 21 in verse 22, it talks about the man left him, walked away with a sad face because he had great possessions. 
he, did, he wasn't willing to part ways with his earthly possessions so that way he can have a heavenly reward. And there's many of us, and earlier as I mentioned about being good, we talk about so many good things on earth that we miss the heavenly reward because God is wanting us to give up these good things, these good jobs, these good investments, these good things, these things that supposedly are good on earth. It holds no heavenly reward. I'm not saying that good things that we have as a result of us following God are bad. I'm saying that when God says give it up, regardless of how good it looks, we have to give it up. Because good, as I mentioned earlier, is subjective. But God being good is not. And that's not up for debate. That's fact. Good, is a, as we use it, is a matter of opinion. You could argue opinions, but you can't argue fact. God is good, and he's good all the time. Will you listen to him and heed his instructions? Or will you be like the, the man there and walk away sad because you're not willing to part ways with good things, good earthly things, instead of taking heed and being able to obtain godly things, which is in heaven?